welcome back. Now we're going to look at section 5.3, which combines the equilibrium analysis we had, finding the equilibrium points, with the trace determinant plane analysis of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors without actually calculating them to determine the linear behavior at an equilibrium point. We start off with our main reason for combining these two, and that is the Hartman-Grobman theorem. Now this section has quite a few named theorems that work through it, because this is kind of a culmination of the theory that, is, that we're, our analysis is based upon. So I want to pull out a few of the ideas and see how we can use these theorems together. This theorem says, if a hyperbolic equilibrium point, and we'll come back to what hyperbolic means in a minute. Hyper, the hyperbolic equilibrium point x bar y bar is shifted to the origin. And by that, we mean we create new variables u, which is x minus x bar, and v equals y minus y bar. And all nonlinear powers, uh, let's just say combinations, combinations of u and v are neglected. This goes back to a Taylor series we'll see in a minute. Then a solution near x bar y bar behaves like the solution to u and v prime equals j of x bar y bar times u and v. So j is a matrix that stands in for our matrix A, and it's used as a j letter because it describes the Jacobian, or combinations of the partial derivatives for our different slope functions. where j of x and y, Jacobian, is the matrix of the x partial of f, the y partial of f, the x partial of g, and the y partial of g is the Jacobian. So this is the main theorem. Um, was proven in part both by Hartman and Grobman, and this one actually was only proven about 100 years ago, which is quite recently in terms of the mathematics we've been studying so far. This differential equations has been around for the last 400 years, if not further. And so having something that's only been proven in the last 100 years is fairly significant. So let's see, what pieces do we need to work with? Well, first, we need a definition of what hyperbolic equilibrium point. 
Let's definition. An equilibrium point, I'll just say, I'll just say EQ point, EQ point is hyperbolic if the determinant of the matrix, in this case we'll stand J in to represent the linearization, is not equal to zero. And the trace of J is less than, oh, sorry, is not equal to zero whenever the determinant of J is positive. So what does this mean? Well, the determinant of J not equal to zero goes back to our trace terminant plane. The turn of J not equal to zero is right here. Unstable on one side, stable on the other. Those So this avoids degenerate EQ points. And the reason we want to avoid those is that on one side we have a stable behavior, and on the other side we have a saddle, semi-stable. So we move, it's right, it's a barrier between two kinds of stability, stable and semi-stable. On the other side, it's between unstable and semi-stable. So again, we want to avoid the barriers between two, time, two kinds of stability. The other part, trace of j is not equal to zero whenever a term of j is greater than zero. This avoids centers. When the term is positive, the trace cannot be zero. And that's right down the middle. Now, the reason we want to avoid centers is that if you move a little bit to the right, you become a spiral source that's unstable. If you move a little bit to the left, you become a spiral sink, and that's stable. So again, this is a boundary between stable and unstable, whereas these are boundaries between stable and semi-stable, and unstable and semi-stable. So those are the three pieces, the three boundary pieces between our three regions of stability. Stable, uh, semi-stable, and unstable. Hyperbolic equilibrium points are points that are firmly in the stable, unstable, or semi-stable regions. They can't be on the edges between those three pieces. Okay. So now that we have the idea in line, our goal is to compute these partials to form our A matrix. But before we get into it, let me take a minute. Uh, well, and later on, we'll take a look at what this means to neglect the nonlinear combinations. This is terms from Taylor series of our functions. So we'll take a look at what that looks like a little bit later, 
But first, I want to give you some examples of what to do, the procedure of finding the Jacobian at the various equilibrium points and analyzing it. Our procedure is first step, find all equilibrium points, setting x prime equal to zero and y prime equal to zero. Second step is forming the Jacobian at each x bar, y bar, where J is a matrix of partials. So we take the x partial of the first function, this is our f of x, y, and then we take the y partial of it. And our second row is the x partial of the second function, this is our g of x and y, and g of y. Okay. After we have our Jacobian, we analyze equilibrium point type using the trace determinant plane. And then our fourth step is to sketch the local behaviors and connect them. So looking at our example, we have first step x prime equals 4x equals 0. That gives us one option, x equals 0. And then y prime equals 4y minus 4y cubed equals 0. That gives us a few more options. So let's factor this out first. A 4y times 1 minus y squared equals 0. So we have y equals 0 is one option. Then we have a quadratic. So there's two options left over. Uh, if we solve this for y, or y squared, y squared equals 1, and the square root gives us two options, y equals plus or minus 1. So now we form the equilibrium points from these options. We know that x has to be equal to 0. And then y has three different options. So 0, 0 is one option. 0 minus 1 is an option, and 0 positive 1 is an option. Okay, so that was the first step. Second step, we form Jacobian. So Jacobian is the matrix of the x partials and y partials of our two functions. So first we take the x partial of 4x, that's simply a 4, and then we take the y partial, again, y partial is treating x as constant, there's no y's here left over, so we just have a 0 on that top right. For our second function, g, we take the x partial, there's no x, that's a 0, and then take the y partial, 4 minus 12y squared. Okay, so now we evaluate this Jacobian at each of the equilibrium points and analyze it. Okay, so now that we have the Jacobian, in general, let's form it at the three equilibrium points and analyze the equilibrium point using that Jacobian. Plugging x and y both equal to zero, we get the diagonal matrix with fours down the main diagonal. And that tells us a few things. One, we know the trace is positive. 
but even more specifically, and then terminate to 16, we know that the eigenvalues are 4 and 4, and there's two linearly independent eigenvectors, the 1, 0 to hit this diagonal entry, and the 0, 1 to hit that diagonal entry. Now, the eigenvalue is positive, but because there are two of that eigenvalue, it is a duplicate source. Now, duplicate sources have two subcases. One is when you have only when you have two linearly independent eigenvalues, or sorry, one when you have two linearly independent eigenvectors like we have here, that's where it acts like a source. And the other subcase where you only have one linearly independent eigenvector and that would act like a spiral source. But this one doesn't spiral because we have two linearly independent eigenvectors. So now let's look at the next equilibrium point. 0, negative 1. The only entry that's changing is this bottom right piece. So plugging in negative 1 for y, we get 4 minus 12 is a negative 8. This is also diagonal. Which means we know the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. We'll put the negative eigenvalue first. That goes with the y direction, 0, 1, to hit the second diagonal entry. And then R2, 4, goes with the x direction, 1, 0. Now, it might be helpful to write this negative eigenvalue in terms of blue. Just remember that negative eigenvalues are stable. So we know that the y-axis is stable, or the y-axis direction is stable at this equilibrium point, and the x-axis direction is unstable. And because we have opposite sine eigenvalues, this is a saddle. Okay, last equilibrium point, zero one. Plugging in y equals 1, we get a 1 squared is 1. 4 minus 12 is a negative 8. This is the same. This is the exact same matrix. Which means it's a saddle. R1 is negative 8. With the y direction, 0, 1, being the stable direction pulling in. And the x direction... being the unstable piece. Okay, now what does this mean? It means that we have the same type of behavior at x equals 0, y equals negative 1, as we do at x equals 0, y equals positive 1. So same behavior at two different equilibrium points. So let's graph these together. We have let's center that a little bit. Okay. So let's add some axes. Here's one unit away. Our three equilibrium points are at zero zero, the origin. At zero one and zero negative one. Okay, 
So the origin first we know is a duplicate source, but it acts like a source. It's pushing away in two directions, the x direction and the y direction. Okay, the zero negative one equilibrium point down the bottom is a saddle and it's pulling in along the y direction. That matches up with our source above, our duplicate source above, and it's pushing away in the x direction. Now, our saddle on top is the same behavior. So we're pushing towards it from above and below along the y-axis, and we're pulling away from it along the x-axis, or along the x-axis direction. So now, we just need to connect these behaviors together with solution curves. So if we are off a little bit to the right, we're going to be pushing up and pushing away. And then we get pulled towards and then pushed away. There. We're above. We're getting pulled in and pushed away. Now let's look at the two. The blue up here has an e to the negative 8 t, and the red has an e to the 4 t. So the 8 t is actually going to be pulling in towards 0 faster than e to the 4 t is pushing away. Not quite that bad, but okay, it's not drawing right there. And if we are a little further off, like that getting pushed. The closer we are to this axis, the longer we'll stay. Along that. Oh. On the bottom, we it's symmetric, so and closer it is, we get pulled in and then pushed away. On the bottom, pulled in, pushed away, pulled in, pushed away. Now, in all this chaos, there are a couple of stable um, curves. We call these the stable manifolds of this system. They are the only points or the only curves that will end at a finite value. All the other ones will shoot off to infinity. This system is globally unstable, but there are a few curves that are stable. And those are the ones that follow that stable eigenvector. Actually, that whole line, which starts out unstable, gets shot right into a stable direction. This point is stable. That point is stable because it's equilibrium. Nothing's changing there this point as well, and all the solutions down, and all the solutions keep going. So the entire y-axis is a set of curves that are stable. Everywhere else, if you start off anywhere off that, if you start out with the initial condition off the y-axis, uh, x is not equal to zero, then your system will diverge to positive infinity. There is one to, to infinity in either both or at least one of the two pieces. Now, what 
Uh, this is an interesting system, partly because it's simple enough to give us, simple enough to start off with diagonal matrices, but giving us interesting enough um, complexity in the dynamics. But this system also has a nice 3D analog surface because these two, the two, uh, the two differential uh, slopes come from the same, uh, come from two partials of the same surface. Let me go through, I want to go through the example to show you how you can pair the graph of the dynamical system and differential equations to how we would analyze the extreme points, we call them critical points, of a 2D surface in calculus. Thank you.